Hello friends, good afternoon and welcome to Edusat Live Lectures. Dear friends, as you know that we have already started a series on political geography and in the previous class we got to learn about various kind of boundaries. One among the boundaries was continental and maritime boundaries. In today's lecture we will try and understand in details what continental and maritime boundaries are all about and to understand them we will also take up various case studies. To discuss this topic we have with us our subject expert Dr. Intikab Ahmed. Dr. Ahmed is an expert on political geography and he has been associated with Delhi universities in various teaching capacities for past four years. Without further ado, I would like to welcome sir to our studios and request him to start the lecture. Welcome sir. Thank you. Very good, uh, good afternoon dear students. As in the previous lecture, first of all we should know that what are these uh, different kind of boundaries. So in the previous lecture we were discussing various kind of frontiers and boundaries, their concepts and classification. So in that lecture we discussed two different aspects or two different types of the classification and in this particular lecture we will be discussing about the continental and maritime boundaries and their case studies. So first of all we should before starting this topic continental and maritime boundaries we should understand what are different functions of the boundaries, why these boundaries are very much important. So the boundaries in present time they are very much in news in different countries in different maritime zones of the world. They are important in terms of military purposes, different security purposes and different protective purposes. They act as a legal and administrative functions in different capacities, different zones of the world. They act as also as, as economic and commercial functions, various economic activities either goods or services they are also linked by various boundaries because they are carried out by different boundary or different frontier zones. And they act as also contrast or ideological functions because different countries they are having different kind of contrast or ideology that we can see like in the example of Eastern and Western Germany's having two different kind of contrast or ideology. Boundaries also function as socio and psychological. Sometimes the boundaries they also functions as social aspect of different uh, regions, different psycho or psychological aspect of different uh, population of the world. So we can say that the international boundaries they are not only provide physical security, security and resources but they also provide the and they order the national and transnational economics and the social life. In other words we can say that the boundaries can be used as barriers or as the bridges between different countries, different regions of the world as has been stated by Karamandani and Estadel. So before going into further we should also know what are different purposes of the boundaries. Either they are continental boundaries or they are maritime boundaries. So in present time we can see that these boundaries has been redefining and the functions of these boundaries has been re-emerging as they are becoming more permeable and becoming less hostile because the technology and globalization they have refined various and protected various uh, economic functions of the boundaries and in present time various 
uh, like international borders, they are emerging as a borderless world and they are coming as a global villages due to various technological development into different regions and the, because of the globalization and regional integration processes. Although in some regions, the boundaries, they are like, in, uh, they are in, in terms of political boundaries and they are dividing different regions, but in present time, different regions, they are coming closer and forming like a global village or the borderless world. So by seeing this, we can see that the purpose of the boundaries, there are various numerous purpose of the boundaries, but the bas basic purpose of a boundary is that it identify a territory within a state or uh, with, within a state that administers laws and collected taxes and that provide the defense. So a boundary may also serve various uh, purposes like the allocating, the dividing or the controlling of a territory. So these are the basic purpose of a boundary. So we should understand what are different classification as in the previous lecture, we have already discussed the morphological and the genetic boundaries classification, but particularly in to today's lecture, we will be discussing about the uh, boundaries based upon different locations. So these are of two kinds, continental boundaries and maritime boundaries. So let us understand what are the continental boundaries. The continental boundaries are those boundaries that limits the state sovereignty from different neighboring states on land surface and are called continental boundaries. These also or these may include the physical boundaries, the geometric boundaries, the anthropogenic boundaries like they can be antecedent, they can be subsequent or they can be superimposed or the really or the relict boundaries. By seeing this map, we can see that all over the world, there are various boundaries that has been demarcated. Some are the hard boundaries, which are shown by red lines. These are the, those lines which are already constructed or the yellow line, which are in the form of, or which are in the process of under construction. And in some regions of the world, there are soft water. So before going the further, we should know what are different terminologies of a uh, continental boundaries because in the last class we were discussing the frontiers, the boundaries and the borders. These are the three terminologies generally used in the continental boundaries. So first of all, we should know what is the legal definition of these three boundaries. Like a boundary is a line that separates different states and the uh, frontier is, is a zone where or which is having length and width or, and where the population may live in that particular zone. And the border is that line which can be a zone or which can be a uh, line. So after this, we should know what are the maritime boundaries. As we all know that on globe, the water covers around 71% area of the earth surface. So there is, uh, that, may, that falls under different national jurisdiction of different countries. And here we should also understand what is the difference between jurisdiction and the sovereignty. And the uh, jurisdiction that may confer the limited rights to regulate the maritime boundaries, such as in the case of fishing or drilling for the oil. And after this, we should know what are the maritime boundaries? What is the definition of the maritime boundaries? So a maritime boundaries is 
a conceptual division of water surface on the surface of the earth that can be used by physiographic or geopolitical criteria although in some countries of the world it represent different borders of a maritime nations that has been set up by UNCLOS or the United Nations uh, Convention on the Law of the Sea that usually serve to identify different edges of the international waters. And by seeing this map, first of all, we should know what are different zones in which different countries, they try to get the access and what are different laws that define the different zones, which countries is having what kind of sovereignty or what kind of jurisdiction upon different water zones or maritime zones on the surface on the water surface of the earth. So these different zones is or are measured from the baseline. Baseline is that point where the land boundaries and the water boundaries they converge forms the baseline or the coast uh, coastal boundaries. From this baseline the territorial sea start which is around 24 or which is 12 nautical miles from the baseline is the territorial sea and after this there are different zones which we will discuss one by one in detail. So for, we should also know what are different maritime boundaries of the earth on the earth. So the different zones or maritime boundaries that has been shown by United Nations, by different international organizations, that what are different maritime boundaries of the earth. So these all terminologies which has been used by different international organizations like United Nations Conventions on the Law of the Sea and different other international organizations that deals with the maritime boundaries, generally they have given these different concept or different terminologies like internal waters, the territorial sea, the contiguous zone and the continental self and exclusive economic, economic zone and the exclusive fishing zone and the high sea. If we see this zone starting from the land mass of any country or starting from any soil of a country towards the sea, then we can divide, we can see the jurisdiction or the measurement of these all particular zones. Here these all boundaries or these all terminologies, they start counting from the baseline and the exception is the high sea that is or each of the maritime zone that is measured from the baseline according to the UNCLOS or uh, United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea of 1982. So the UN defines the baseline is that line from which the seaward limit of the state territorial sea and certain other maritime zones of jurisdictions are measured. So from this we can see these are different terminologies which we should understand that what is internal water. The internal water is that water which is generally is inside the land boundary of a country. It may be found in rivers, in lakes, in bays, different ports of that particular country or water that is landward of the low tide line. So here the countries is having 100% sovereignty over this internal water. So the other country cannot claim any kind of jurisdiction in this internal water of a particular country. The second concept or second terminology is the territorial sea. This is measured from the baseline which is 12 nautical miles from the baseline, here the coastal state exercises different kind of sovereignty 
over its territorial sea, their air space above it and the seabed and the subsoil beneath is beneath is uh, it. The foreign flag ships, they enjoy the right of the innocent passage. It means different ships of different countries, they can move in this territorial sea as a innocent passage. Means those vessels which cannot harm the security or different aspect of a particular con country, they can pass from this territorial sea. The contiguous zone is the another terminology which is used in international maritime laws. It is 12 nautical miles after the territorial sea ends or we can say that the contiguous zone forms uh, 24 nautical miles starting from the baseline. The continental self is very important aspect which is generally uh, demarcated till 200 nautical miles but in some regions this is marked as till 300 or 350 nautical miles by the United Nations Conventions on the Law of the Sea under Article 76. The next important terminology is exclusive economic zones which is also till 200 nautical miles that has been set by UNCLOS, different UNCLOS. Here the sovereign right of the purpose is of exploring, exploiting and conserving different kind of natural resources. Then is the exclusive fishing zone which is also till 200 nautical miles. Then after this there is a high sea where different countries having the principal jurisdiction where there is a freedom of different countries they are having the freedom of navigation and fishing laying the submarine cable, cables and pipe, pipelines and different artificial or setting up of different uh, artificial islands. After this, there is an area which is comprised of seabed and subsoil beyond the limit of national jurisdiction. So these are the important terminologies that has been used by different international organizations that deals in maritime bondies uh, jurisdiction. So what we should know what are the different kind of methods that delimits these different zones in maritime zones. So the important, uh, very important aspect which is UNCLOS 3 has mentioned that has been, uh, that uh, conference has been set up in 1982 and the ratification has been in 1983 in which 117 countries they have signed and recognized the different borders till 12 nautical miles with exclusive fishing right of 200 nautical miles. So there are other aspect which also or there are other methods which also uh, give the delimitation process like different conference and different treaties has been taken up like the first one that was the law of the sea conventions of 1929 has been taken place is uh, at Monaco that discussed the territorial sea extension and the second conference the league of the nations at Hague notification conference has been taken up in 1930 that discussed different territorial seabed debated and the uh, treaty has not been adopted and the most important aspect, most important organization that work over the maritime boundaries delimitation is United Nations Conventions on the Law of the Sea. By this three important or three different clause has been set up. The first one was that a conference has been taken up in 1958 in Geneva in which different aspect of maritime zones has been discussed. The second UNCLOS has been discussed 
it, uh, at Geneva in 1960 in which the discussion was to, resol to resolve the deadlock on the width of the territorial sea, what will be the width of the territorial zone of different countries and the most important, the UNCLOS 3, the different meeting of this uh, conference has been taken up uh, starting from 1973 till 1982 and eight different places in New York, in Caracas and in Geneva, different meeting has been taken up and the important laws has been set up that discuss different aspect of the maritime boundaries and zones and this important UNCLOS 3 had discussed various important aspect related to the maritime zones uh, delimitations as it was uh, started or it was uh, the first meeting started at, the, uh, at Jamaica in 1982 where different, uh, different countries they have signed and the main objective of this UNCLOS 3 was to establish the maritime boundaries of different countries and uh, to give different concepts other than the unrestricted sovereign and ter territorial jurisdiction of different countries. The key features or important points that has been discussed in UNCLOS 3 um, were that the coastal state that exercise the sovereignty over their territorial sea which they have a right to establish its breadth up to 12 nautical miles where the foreign vessels they can move as or they can be allowed as the innocent passage through those territorial waters. The other important features of this UNCLOS 3 was that the coastal state having the sovereign rights till 200 nautical miles, uh, 200 nautical miles which is called exclusive economic zones of that particular country where different natural resources whether they are living or non-living resources they can be exploited, they can be used for uh, that particular country and different other economic activities they can be carried out and that, uh, and that country can exercise the jurisdiction over marine scientific research and environmental protection. And the next important feature of this UNCLOS 3 was that the limit of the territorial sea, the exclusive economic zone and the continental shelf of different islands will be considered as the uh, these zones of a land and if there is any rock in the uh, water body then that will be having no exclusive economic zone or the continental self. So after seeing this all we also should know what are the different aspect by which different maritime boundaries of the world are being delimited what are different legal means by which different boundaries has been set up. There are various process by which different delimitation process has been uh, carried out like the negotiations, different countries they try to negotiate different maritime dispute, different maritime zone or the boundary demarcation and that led to different agreements. There are another delimitation process which is conciliation commission or the good offices, different international organizations, they try to set up different conciliation commissions and the good offices like United Nations Security uh, Office which also works in this direction and the arbitration or judicial settlement of different maritime zones is another delimitation process and the adjudication at international court of or the tribunal also try to, to adjudicate to adjudicate 
different kind of methodologies to set up different maritime zones, different maritime boundaries. So the court and tribunal, they have played very important role in delimitation, in demarcation of the maritime boundaries. And many states, they avoid the litigations or the judicial pro proceeding. They try to come forward and mutually try to uh, solve those maritime disputes of different countries because different countries, they always are not satisfied by this international laws or international division of different water bodies or marine bodies. So after seeing this all, we should know what are the continental dispute by which different countries, they, they try to uh, they try to fight for the access of different uh, marine resources. So there are generally four types of continental boundary disputes. The first one is territorial boundary disputes. Different countries, they try to gain the sovereignty or the ownership of a particular territory. So there is a dispute regarding the, this territorial disputes. In some countries like in African nations, there's, there is irredentism where the land that was formerly the part of a, another state within which there are ethnic or there were ethnic ties and those countries has been become independent and after being the independent, the particular territory tries to raise their independent voice. So there is a dispute regarding the territory or the ownership of that particular territory. The other kind of continental dispute is positional dispute where the boundary should be there. Like we can see the example of South, uh, in South Andes mountain regions, which is between Chile and Argentina, that they, these two country, they disagree and they interpret different kind of boundary treaties that where uh, that particular median line or where should be that uh, line should be demarcated in the Andes mountain. The another dispute is functional dispute. This we can see in the example of like United States and Mexico. These are two uh, regions where the migration problems or the population from the Mexico when goes to the United States, it is considered as the alien population. And this dispute is considered as functional disputes. In some regions, different countries, they fight for resource accessibility. Like we can see in Kuwait and Iraq, North and South Sudan, they also fight for the different kind of uh, different kind of resources. So what are the maritime boundaries disputes? The maritime di dispute generally are needed when two different states, they are having the overlapping maritime zones, whether they have, either they are having the opposing coast or where the coast of the two states are adjacent to each other. So there are different rules for the delimitation of the territorial sea, exclusive economic zone, continental shelf, including the shelf beyond 200 nautical miles, like the median line rule. All over the world, there are around 400 boundaries that has been uh, recorded or that has been, or the data has been collected by Joe Ruffer, in which around 200 boundaries has been agreed upon. So these are different boundaries, which is having different disputes, uh, like disputed boundaries are shown in red lines and the median boundaries, they are shown by yellow lines and the treaty lines has been shown by blue lines. And these are different uh, exclusive economic zones of different countries and the purple color, which is shown by 
disputed EEZ of different countries. So we should know what is the importance of maritime boundaries and zones. There are various importance of maritime zones like fisheries management, deep sea minerals development, security and the biodiversity conservation, research, transport and vessel monitoring. So in the last we should know what are the causes that led to the dispute. The, uh, dispute. There are two dimensions regarding the territorial waters controversies. The first one is territorial sovereignty which is the legacy of the history and the second one is the relevant jurisdiction by which different countries they try to interpret differently. Uh, different dispute has been resolved by negotiations but not all dispute has been uh, resolved by these negotiations and thank you very much for this. Welcome students, as in the earlier session we were discussing the maritime and continental boundaries. In this second part we will be discussing about different case studies of the continental and maritime boundaries. Different countries why they fight and what kind of boundaries are there between different countries. So first of all we should take the example from continental boundaries like we can say or we can take the most important or very important example of the dispute between United States and Canadian border as the these two countries they were under the British rule and the American war of independence that has been ended in 1783 and America became independent after that a red line boundary was demarcated that was shown to George III for his approval but that boundary has or the red line boundaries red, uh, red line that map has not been incorporated in different treaties when the boundaries of United States and Canada were being made. So there are different kind of boundaries if we see from the political point of view like the best example of geometric boundaries we were discussing earlier is United States and Canada. This United States and Canada having around 2100 kilometers boundary that is between 49 degree parallels and that has been established in 1846 by a treaty between the United States and the Great Britain because Canada was is still that part of Great Britain. In fact, 1100 kilometer boundaries is also shared between United States and Canada in the region of uh, Alaska, uh, which is between 140, deg uh, 140 degree west longitude. And United States and Canada is also having a physical boundary, having different water bodies in terms of lake like Lake Superior, Lake Huron, Lake Erie and Lake Ontario, they make different physical boundaries in terms of lake water. This is also considered in an example of complex boundaries and the complex boundaries we have already discussed are those boundaries that is having more than one type of boundaries between two countries. So in United States, and Canada different bodies they make the boundaries like in the eastern sector the great 
lakes and the St. Lawrence River makes a boundary and in the western sector the 49 degree parallel makes the boundary. So this is the example of uh, complex boundaries between these two countries the example is of also antecedent boundaries because the 49 parallel line between United States and Canada is also considered as antecedent boundaries in terms of the relationship to its subsequent, subsequent colonizations it is superimposed in superimposed in terms of the indigenous population over which it passed being generally neglected like other geometrical boundaries it is unrelated to the underlying pattern of train and to the boundary was politically very much acceptable to both parties. The other example we can take the example of India and Pakistan which is very much important. As we can see that is the boundary line between these India and these regions was especially Pakistan and Afghanistan because earlier these India and Pakistan they were the same one countries and in that period in 1893 a line was demarcated between British India and Afghanistan which was known as the Durand line and after that various wars has been taken place like the war of 1947-48 after just after the partition of India and Pakistan and the other war of 1965 uh, and the next important war was of 1971 because uh, the eastern Pakistan which is now Bangladesh has been separated from the western Pakistan and the another important war that has been taken place in 1999 which is known as Kargil Bars. If we see the history these all wars generally either generally has been taken place because of the boundary problems and after 1971 wars one agreement has been taken place in Shimla in 1972 on the ceasefire line as the line of control but still after that various uh, various fighting has been taken place between the two countries as we can see th these boundaries are also in political geography these are also the example of India and Pakistan boundary they are the example of the physical boundaries physical boundaries like rivers make the boundary between India and Pakistan as the subtlest rivers make the boundary between India and Pakistan in fact we can see that the dispute the present dispute in maritime terms because Pakistan, India and Pakistan dispute is having in two different uh, locality two different terms continental dispute is there and maritime dispute is there which can be seen in the marshes region of India in the state of Gujarat in terms of run of Kutch region where there is a dispute in the Sar Creek region because this is very much economic potential area where there is a subsea oil and the gas deposits. So these two countries they are trying to gain maximum of that from uh, this marshes region and this boundary India and Pakistan boundary is also one of the anthropogenic example because in few cases the religion has been used to divide different countries and the best example of this is that India and Pakistan has been divided by different uh, powers based upon different religions like Hindus in India and Muslim in Pakistan. This is one of the example of subsequent boundaries because after uh, the cultural landscape was there but subsequently different land boundaries has been set up in different regions. This is also the example of superimposed boundary as the Britishers they have set up 
or superimpose the boundary between India and Pakistan. So these are the continental example. The other example is of the border of Israel, which is very much, very much in news in present time as the Israel is, is having the border dispute between different countries. As we can see that the Israel and Syria border problem, Israel and Lebanon border problem, and the West Bank wall, these borders has been changed from time to time with developments in Israel's military and diplomatic situations. So one green line was set up, which was pre to 1967 borders. That if we see the interpretation of the green line, the Israel's border covers with different countries or touches with different countries like in the north, Lebanon is there, in the northeast, the Golan Heights, and the Syria is there, in the east, the West Bank, and Jordan is there, and in the southwest, the Gaza Strip, and Egypt, these countries are there. So first of all, we should know what is the uh, scenario of the Israel and Syrian boundaries. The border between Israel and uh, Syria has been set up in 1967 after the war with different countries and the border is called purple line border because it was drawn on the UN map with a purple line. So after this purple line set up, the Syrian, they tried to cross the line in 1973 that led to the Yomeku war and after this uh, Yom Kippur war, the Israel has gained the access inside the Syrian territory, but because of the international mechanism, international pressure and international uh, organization, they have asked to uh, like come back from that particular region and the boundary has been set up as the earlier purple line boundary. The border of the Syria are still in the conflict or in the disputed zones. The border between Israel and Lebanon are known as blue line because it was published by the UN for the determination of the fully withdrawal of Israel from the Lebanon. So this blue line border which is shown by dark blue line, this was demarcated in 2000 by blue line. Other dispute is West Bank wall. The wall that was as a part of the Palestinian and Israel conflict resolution was set up, which is known as, known by different names as West Bank barrier, the separation fence, the separation wall, or the security wall. So this, the border was made to separate the Israel and the Palestinian population. And the Israel claims that after the installation of this wall, after the making of this wall, West Bank wall, the different kind of security and the suicide bombing in Israel has been lessened and the terrorist attack has been declined starting uh, 73 in 2003 and 9 in 2010. But there are other aspects of this boundary which are not uh, considered by different international organization. They consider it as the West Bank wall as it is the illegitimate as per the international laws and by human rights commissions. So because the uh, Palestinian population that has been reduced the freedom, the road were uh, closed, they lost the lands and there were difficulties in assessing the medical and educational facilities. In fact, in 2003, the United Nations resolution declared this West Bank wall as illegal, where different, and they considered it as it deviates from the green line and that should be torn down and vetoed by the United States in the United Nations Security Council 
in 2004 also uh, this line or by different resolution there was an obligation on Israel that uh, Israel should abide by the international organization and international laws and it should not go uh, beyond this international laws in uh, 2004 an advisory opinion by international court of justice was given to the Israel that it cannot rely on the self-defense of an state's uh, necessity in order to produce the wrongfulness of the construction of the wall. The court also accepted that the construction of that West Bank wall is and its associated reg regime, they are contrary, they are against the international laws. One important aspect or one imp very important region is Veer Tabel, which is example of uh, continental boundary, which is between Egypt and Sudan. This is more than 2,000 uh, square kilometer area, which is in between or along the border of Egypt and Sudan. It is a de jure or the no man's land. There is a particular region where no countries claims the right on that particular land, which is known as Bir Tabil. In fact, near this region, as we can see the example like this, uh, this region, this is known as the Halef Triangle, where two different countries, they try to gain this Halef Triangles, which is shown by green, as the Egypt northern part that also claim the green part and Sudan also claim the green part which is known as the Halep Tangles but the smaller part in between that is not claimed by any countries that has been lagged behind, behind. So different scholar they said that this uh, Bir Tabel region is only place on the earth which is habitable and in fact is not claimed by any country. And after this, we can see the example of the maritime boundaries case studies. So we can see different maritime zones, they have been set up all over the globe. So first of all, we should know our adjoining regions or the South Asian regions. The uh, dispute was between India and Bangladesh maritime boundaries the dispute started after when the uh, Bangladesh became independent in 1971 and the dispute started in 1974 regarding the India-Bangladesh maritime boundary. But this uh, dispute has been settled in 2014 by around eight rounds of bilateral negotiation, negotiations that has been started in 1974, but till 2009, there was no as such uh, settlement between these two countries and the Bangladesh served different notice, uh, notices to Inda, India on the basis of UNCLOS. And in 2014, the verdict on the dispute regarding the delimitation of this maritime boundaries has been given to India and Bangladesh in which the total area of the disputed zone was around 25,000 square kilometers out of which around four-fifth or around 19,000 uh, square kilometer area was given to Bangladesh and there was an argument that also focuses on different aspects and that include different aspects of the locations of the land boundary terminus, the delimitation of the territorial sea and the exclusive economic zone and the continental self within and more than 200 nautical miles. These all issues were also discussed in that uh, verdict. In fact, there was a issue of Hari Vanga river that and India claims that this river flows 
द ईस्ट ऑफ द न्यू मोर आईलैंड और न्यू मोर आईलैंड इज ऑल्सो कॉल्ड पूर्वाशा इन इंडिया एंड इट इज नोन एज साउथ तालीपट्टी बाई बांग्लादेश सो दिस वर्डिक्ट ऑल्सो रिकोगनाइज इंडिया सोवरेंटी ओवर न्यू मोर आईलैंड एंड रिसीव्ड नियरली सिक्स थाउजेंड स्क्वायर किलोमीटर्स ऑफ द एरिया और दिस कंटेस्टेड जोन टू इन इंडिया वेयर द आईलैंड हैज वंस एग्जिस्टेड इंडिया इज ऑल्सो हैविंग सम काइंड ऑफ म्यूचुअल और सम काइंड ऑफ वी कैन से द डिस्प्यूट प्रॉब्लम्स विद अदर कंट्रीज लाइक द तीन बीगा कॉरिडर दैट इज द स्ट्रिप ऑफ लैंड दैट हैज बीन गिविन टू बेस्ट बंगाल इन टू थाउजेंड अलेवन फॉर लीज सो दैट द बांग्लादेश कैन एक्सेस इट्स दहा ग्राम एंड अंगर पोटा इनक्लेव सो इट इज ए इनक्लेव ऑफ इंडिया दैट हैज बीन लीज टू बांग्लादेश एंड देर इज ए वन अनादर इंडिया एट ज्वाइनिंग टेरिटरी विच इज ए काला पानी टेरिटरी ए पार्ट ऑफ इंडिया एंड नेपाल काला पानी रीजन दैट इज ऑल्सो डिस्प्यूटेड रीजन बट दैट इज द स्मॉलर सुस्ता रिवर डिस्प्यूट एंड द स्मॉलर स्टिल अंटा एंड नावल परसाई डिस्प्यूट आफ्टर सींग दिस ऑल देर आर वन इम्पॉर्टेंट मेरी टाइम डिस्प्यूट इन टर्म्स ऑफ चोगोस एर्ची पैलेगो विच इज इन द इंडियन ओशीन एंड दिस चोगोस एर्ची पैलेगो हैज बीन डिस्प्यूटेड बिटवीन यूनाइटेड किंगडम एंड मॉरिशस इन फैक्ट यूनाइटेड किंगडम एडमिस्टर्स दिस वेरी मच आर्ची पैलेगो एज पार्ट ऑफ ए ब्रिटिश इंडियन ओशीन टेरिटरी दिस द वर्ल्ड लार्जेस्ट मेराइन रिजर्व हैज बीन सेटअप और स्टेब्लिश बाय द ब्रिटिश गवर्नमेंट इन टू थाउजेंड टेन एंड द एरिया ऑफ दिस मेराइन रिजर्व और दैट हैज बीन स्टेब्लिश इन टू थाउजेंड फोर्टीन इज अराउंड सिक्स लैक्स फोर्टी थाउजेंड स्क्वायर किलोमीटर्स विच इज द लार्जर दैन फ्रांस एंड मोर दैन द साइज ऑफ द कैलिफोर्नियन स्टेट ऑफ यूनाइटेड स्टेट ऑफ अमेरिका बट आफ्टर सेटिंग दिस मेराइन रिजर्व इन टू थाउजेंड टेन बाय द ब्रिटिश गवर्नमेंट द परमानेंट कोर्ट ऑफ आर्बिट्रेशन इन टू थाउजेंड फिफ्टीन हैज डिक्लेयर दिस एज द वायलेशन ऑफ द इंटरनेशनल लॉ इट मीन्स दिस पार्टिकुलर आर्ची पैलोगू इज द टेरिटरी ऑफ द ब्रिटेन बट द सेटिंग अप ऑफ मेराइन जोन इज कंसिडर्ड एज इलीगल इन इंटरनेशनल लॉज सो इट इज द लार्जेस्ट कोरल एट ऑल दिस चौगोस आर्ची पैलेगो इट इज द लार्जेस्ट कोरल एट ऑल फेर डिफरेंट इंपॉर्टेंट आईलैंड आर फाउंड लाइक डीगो गार्सिया विच इज वेरी मच मिलिट्री बेस और वेरी मच इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर डिफेंस पर्पसेज एंड डिफरेंट डिफेंस इंस्टॉलेशन हैज बीन सेट सेट अप बाई यूनाइटेड स्टेट्स इन दिस डीगो गार्शिया इंडिया इन द इन द इंडियन ओशीन एंड द लास्ट वन केस स्टडी इज द इंडिया श्रीलंका मेरीटाइम बॉन्डी डिस्प्यूट दैट वॉज देयर बट इट हैज बीन सेटल्ड बाई एम ए केबली बाई डिफरेंट कंट्रीज इन नाइनटीन सेवेंटी फोर दिस एग्रीमेंट नाइनटीन सेवेंटी फोर एग्रीमेंट वॉज बिटवीन द इंडिया एंड द श्रीलंका ऑन द बाउंड्री ऑफ दिस historic water and in 1976 these two countries has been uh, agreed upon the this uh, uh, making of different boundaries and the boundary line between india and sri lanka that followed the median line median line principle except if we uh, and accept the adjusted park way in relation to the Uh, settlement that is found on the Kachatibu Island. In fact, this Kachatibu Island was also in 1976 was given to Sri Lanka, uh, but in 2011 the Tamil Nadu government has contested that this Kachatibu Island should be a part of India, and given this Kachatibu Island to Sri Lanka is unconstitutional. We can see that. 
in the Indian region or the subcontinent of India, uh, the boundaries, the maritime boundaries which India shares with different countries, uh, different maritime zones, they has been settled. Like we can see the example, India has settled its maritime dispute with starting from Maldives with Sri Lanka, with Bangladesh in 2014, with Myanmar, with Thailand, and with Indonesia. So India's maritime dispute in present time is with only states of Pakistan in run of Kutch. So there's a great deployment in the Indian Ocean region. And in the last week, we can say that there should be, for this maritime zones, and for continental boundary mechanism, there should be more comprehensive agreement, including modern cartographic techniques that should make different maps and more comprehensive agreement should be there. There should be peaceful settlement of different conflict and their solution should be there. And the next important thing is the geopolitical legal framework that should be there between different domestic policies, different foreign policies, and by international laws for the resource development and future management. And different bodies, they should serve local, national, regional, and international interest for the peaceful coexistence of human security and in the last we can say that we can quote the example or the quote quotation of Robert Frost that the good fences make good neighbors. It means if the countries they are coming closer and they are making the good neighbors, they are using that boundary or the functions of that boundary or the purpose of that boundary should be for the welfare of the humanity, welfare of the people or welfare of the population on two sides of that uh, boundary. So this should be the mo motives of this boundaries development. Thank you very much. Uh, on that note, I would like to thank sir for this very in interesting discussion and thank you dear friends for watching our show. Stay tuned and keep watching. Thank you.